What is going on, everybody? Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. Got my man, Jay Mack. What up, what up? What's going on, man? I'm hanging out. I missed you last week when I was in Dallas. Yeah. Frozen tundra of Dallas, Texas. I had to say I did not miss not being in Dallas. Man, the messed up thing is I've had to see snow. Like, and we're, we, I think we're talking about this, so let me leave it be. Let me leave that be. Anyway, Dallas is great. Got to do a couple podcasts while I was out there. Um, I sent you videos of the studios I was in and I walked into, and they were very nice. So um, they were really, really nice. Um, and those shows you'll be, we'll be sharing. Um, you'll see them on my social media and stuff. We'll be pushing their, their shows. They were, they were really great. Yeah, and we'll probably throw them in the show notes too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so it was cool. I'm excited for you guys to hear um, what we put together. And I was telling Jonathan, I was like, man, these studios are phenomenal. But I didn't walk into my studio and feel like immediately, like I went from like the penthouse to the hood. Like I didn't feel like that at all. Um, I felt like I went from the penthouse to like an upper middle class you know, neighborhood. We're all right. Yeah, we're, we're figuring it out. We're doing okay. I definitely felt comfortable. <laughs> we yeah, we there, got it going on. There's some podcast setups that make you question why. Yeah, why are you using video? Yeah, it's like, why? <laughs> this is really an audio medium. You don't well, have to record this. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, people say, Josh, you have a face made for radio. I'm like, yep, yep. That's how some of these studios are. Not the studios I was in last week, though. They are super legit. I mean, hey. We can't all have this luxurious 99 cent foam sound panels from Amazon on the walls. Hey, I've come to love these foam panels that we have here. Hey, they work out great. People always compliment about the sound quality. I mean, and let's not give too much credit to the sound panels. Let's give, you know, Jonathan the, the credit for that. So anyway, Dallas is great. Made it back safely. Um, they were iced out, man, covered in ice. Yeah, I was about to say we could jump right into it. You left <laughs> here a whole lot of snow. Oh, it pissed me off, dude. Like, it, it pissed me off. So this this week's episode is February's Q&A. Jonathan's got some questions. We might reverse order here because we're kind of already leaning towards one. Hit me with that first question, Jonathan, since we're already here. So how did you feel about the snow in Dallas having come from snow in Virginia? And we've just been dealing with snow and more specifically ice here in Virginia on and off. Frankly, Jonathan, it's bullshit. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it. Virginia is one of those places that, uh, particularly where we live in Virginia, like once a year, drop a couple inches of snow. Shit's gone usually by the next day. Everyone got to enjoy it, look at it. It's pretty, um, and and move on and be okay. I swear it snowed like four out of the last five weekends here in Virginia. And then for a hot minute, you know, last week, it snowed and then it was cold and it just stuck around. Like you're just driving around Hampton Roads and there's snow on the side of the road. There's piles of snow in parking lots, snow in the yard. Yeah, and nobody's posting pictures of the piles of snow that we see days after. It's all the backyard oh, and yeah. back porch photos. That bullshit. I caught so much hate. So <laughs> I posted something on social media a couple weeks ago and they were talking about that first snowstorm. And I was like, look, y'all, don't bother posting pictures of your back deck. Nobody cares. And so there were a, a small number of people, but they were passionate who decided to, to share my post and then to encourage people to tag me in pictures of their backyards. And one dude, he's like, yeah, yeah. Tag Josh, tag Josh, tag Josh. And he thought it was so funny. He's tagging me and all these people's posts, their pictures. Homeboy spent more time that weekend tagging me in pictures of people's backyards and the snow that they have that I don't give two shits about than anything else. So I'm either jealous of this man's life where he's just got that time kind of time to spend, or I'm a little freaked out that I am taking up so much headspace of his. <laughs> like, I'm a little, it's, it's awkward. It's weird. And such is that delicate balance of social media and you know and life uh but no as far as snow goes in virginia we don't really get a whole lot of snow um you know it i find it highly inconvenient and disrespectful i'm not one of those who it's like oh my gosh it's beautiful let's go out there and, and do this or that i'm sitting here thinking how much of an inconvenience is this going to be for my staff 
how much productivity is going to get jacked up here at work. I mean, that's what I'm thinking about. So I'm a fan of Friday night snow and melted by Sunday so we can get back to work right on time on Monday morning. That's, that's what I'm about. Um, but you know, people want to run around the snow with their little families and make these pathetic, sorry ass snowmen. Cause there was a half an inch of snow with their little families, their little, their little families, you know, <laughs> if you haven't picked it up in my tone, I am over winter. I am over snow. And then after week three, four weeks in a row of dealing with that shit here in Virginia, I get on a plane to go to Dallas, Dallas, Texas. I love it. Y'all know I love Dallas and it's going to be warm. The weather's going to be great. I'm going to see my family of choice. We are going to, I'm going to learn. I'm going to be able to pour into people I care about. Like I'm just hyped up, bro. I got off the plane. I turned on my phone and it's pop, 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 pop. All my friends, flights canceled, flights canceled, flights canceled. I came in the Wednesday before the storm hit. Uh, the storm came in that night. I came in Wednesday morning. The flights were so jacked up, so messed up. Whole city shut down on Thursday. I'm flying out Friday night. They cancel my flight like three hours before I'm supposed to leave Friday night. American Airlines cancels everything. First time I've flown American to Dallas. First time I've flown direct. And they canceled me three hours before my flight. Lucky me, though, old faithful Delta. For a measly $2,000, I was able to catch that last flight out of there and went through Atlanta. And, man, look, I've got a lot of points, okay, because I travel a lot. A lot of points, and even if I don't have a lot of points, depending on pricing, because my schedule is pretty pretty well known for travel, I can um, I can pick up on um, like deals. It's not often I'm buying like last minute and overpaying like they got me for on this last one. Freaking a, <laughs> I I'll fly up in the front of the plane a lot. I'll use my points. I want to be comfortable. I'm a bigger guy, like, and for some reason I feel safer in first pl- class than like sitting in the back of the plane. Well, catching this last flight out, I got whatever seat they gave me. I was just trying to get home. Devin was out of town. Logan was here by himself. I'm trying to get back. Flight from Atlanta. I was like, hey, I'm on standby to get bumped up. They're like, no, you're not bumping up. I was like, what about Delta Comfort? They're like, nah, walk on back. So I walk back, I'm sitting there and I got an aisle seat. Thankfully I'm next to this monster of a man who's in the middle seat. I was like, this ain't going to be good. So I'm wedged into this damn seat and I'm leaning into the aisle, the walkway, trying to give my man space. And he's doing this whole like folded forward, hunched up. So I can kind of sit back in the seat and relax. So we're kind of on this rotation of who gets to stretch out, who doesn't. So I'm just trying to play the aisle. There was turbulence. It was a very rough flight because this big storm system was moving across the country. So there was no drink service, thank God, because they weren't getting that cart by my shoulders. Like, it was not happening. Here's the thing that I forgot about, and people are like, this guy, he's such an ass. I don't care. I forgot when, (laughs) when you're sitting in the back of the plane, you can see the whole plane move and the whole plane shakes. When I'm in the front, there's nothing to really see, right? It's like two or three rows. I'm watching my TV. You know, I'm very comfortable, so I'm not thinking about death. Back of the plane, all I could think about was death. Yeah, I mean, poverty is going to show you the bro, turbulence. Bro, it, 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 I firmly believe that plane shook more in coach than it does in first class. I don't know what they build into the seats, but I don't feel shit like that when I'm up in the front. That image in my head of you you two squeezed together like a guard bro, and a tackle in those plane seats. Hey, the man at the window seat? All I know is if there was an emergency, a legitimate emergency, he had to know he had no shot. He had no shot of getting out of there. He best have grabbed onto the back of the man in the center aisle. And it was one of those situations where you're both really pissed off, so you don't even acknowledge your presence. I didn't say hello to him. No, I didn't sit down and be like, what's up? Like, we both just knew it sucked. Yeah, I mean, it's two it, alpha males it, there. It, he's, already, to- <laughs> he's already wedged into his seat. I see he worked the logistics. I figure out the whole seatbelt thing and I was like, oh shit. And it, it was fine. But um, I've had enough snow in my life the last month that I, and here's the messed up thing. You add it all up. It's nothing. You know, when Wednesday, when I flew to Dallas at our Detroit location, they had three feet of snow drop on them that day, three feet. I picked up Katie Smith. Y'all know her from the sheep show. 
I picked up Katie Smith in De- at the uh, Norfolk Airport last Tuesday, and literally, had she come in the day after, she'd have been canceled. They got three feet of snow dropped in one day. Three feet. At a certain point, we got to ask, what did the state of Michigan do to God? Well, here's the thing. They don't even worry about it. They're just like, don't you know? And they go around, you know, freaking snowshoes and shit. It's terrible. I couldn't imagine. I would, I would hate it. I only like the snow when it validates oh. my already like long held beliefs. Like I'm a big believer. It shouldn't be cold. Okay. Unless it's going to snow. So when it snows for like a day, I'm like, yeah, I enjoy this. <laughs> it was cold. It snowed. Let's not have it. Anymore. Yeah. The next day I'm like, this is awful. Yeah. I didn't expect it in Texas, but this is two years in a row. They've gotten these storms that have really kind of shut them down. Wait, so. was Ted Cruz there to help you out? I mean, I didn't see Ted. He might've been in Mexico. He was at he was at Cancun. That's so funny. He was in Cabo. The whole internet agreed with him. They're like, "Oh, I would have left if I had the opportunity too." But he still got slandered because it's like oh, that's not what yeah. you do in that situation. I mean, who doesn't though? Like, if you've got the means and you got the ability to bounce, would you not? That's like saying, "Okay, I've got a whole house generator, right? But I'm not going to run it because everybody else in my community doesn't have it." I mean, I guess it's a little bit different when you kind of set yourself up with the obligation that you're like, hey, I'm the elected person to help everybody. Yeah, but he ain't no damn electrician. <laughs> like, what the hell is he supposed to do? He was a le- he's a career politician. It's all bullshit. He ain't there to help nobody. He's looking out for Ted. And anybody who thinks he should be doing anything different, yeah, I mean, come on, guys. Like, this is a joke. These guys who have been there more than a couple terms, this is this is a job. This ain't service anymore. All right. And so if you're thinking Ted needs to look out for you because your lights are off, Ted's going to Cabo. (laughs) I mean, that's the reality. And you're going to fire up your generator. You didn't you didn't elect the plumber or the electrician, the business owner, the person knows how to create and fix things. You elected a good salesperson. That's what you elected. You got sold. I mean, that's it. And that's all of us. Until we start putting different types of people into these positions, like you can't be mad at them. Like these jokers are giving you exactly what they said they're going to give you. But anyway, that wasn't the question. I'm moving on from the snow, Jonathan. What what what's next? So if you're moving on from the snow, are you not a fan of the Winter Olympics that have just gotten underway in Beijing? <laughs> um, whew, these politically charged questions. Yes, let's go. Um, so definitely way more of a Summer Olympics guy than a Winter Olympics guy. Um, can't agree with it. Oh, no, you're a Winter Olympics guy? Huge. I, I feel like this is a hot take, but I'm a huge Winter Olympics guy. Ice Wait, skating? N- Figure skating? No. <laughs> One, professional hockey. I love no, I love interna- a hockey like, guy. international hockey, and then I love, like, the luge and all the downhill skiing events. you got to factor in, like, there's no chance of death in the Summer Olympics. It's a whole lot of good feelings in the Summer Olympics. In the Winter Olympics, people could legitimately die. Oh, I agree with that. I enjoy those things. I think something about watching people in the cold, though, makes me uncomfortable. And so it's it's just like, I don't know, but no, when they're doing the skeleton, is that where like they're just like laying yeah. on like a ski? Single person downhill flying death, down that thing. Death uh roll. What I love slide. to watch is the um what do they call this where they ski and they jump? The long jump, whatever the hell it is. Uh it has a more technical name, but like does. they're flying and they lay out over the skis and oh, they just float. Yeah. That to me is crazy because literally you don't land right. Game over, son. Yeah. Like you're not just out of the Olympics. You've checked out forever. Yeah. There's a whole lot of events in the Winter Olympics that are just testing God. That's just- true. Let me get on these skis, trek through the woods, chasing people. Stop when they tell me start shooting at something. Get back up. Go back through the woods. Start shooting at stuff again. What if one of them just goes off a little bit? They're tired of losing. They've been working their whole life to win gold in the Olympics. They're from a small country. They will just be shamed and dishonoring their country if they don't bring home gold. And they're in, like, fourth place. You could tell me you're going to shoot somebody in the ass yeah. as he's cross-country skiing. <laughs> take a, take one of those small <laughs> rounds to the hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> I just start popping people off. I'm not going to be dishonored. I'm not going to let my country down. See, I mean, what is a shame? I gave it everything I had, including two rounds. Yeah, the winter, the winter Olympics to me are just uh, a little bit more. A little you can bit sell more me dangerous. on it. Like, do you want to watch LeBron and the USA or USA men's team go and beat up on uh, what's a bad basketball country? I don't know, Colombia. Oh, no, we've been getting it. 
handed to us so the last couple of years. Now we came back. So that happened We're one too pretty though. That happened one off season where we let all the young guys go over. Yeah. We're like, go handle that light work. And we got beat by like Greece. Right. We were like, nope. We'll, Send everybody back <laughs> over. Went one gold. We'll we'll get over there. No, I mean, no, for sure. I mean, that's never been entertaining. But when I watch like the Summer Olympics, like I love track. Like I love to watch track. Like you see these incredible human beings, peak physical condition. And now look. Even the stuff you're talking about, like these are high level athletes, peak conditioning, like winter Olympics, summer, Olympics, doesn't matter. But there's something about track where I'm like, these humans are machines. Like I, I don't, I just, I, I can't, and being a slow overweight person, um, you know, I can't imagine moving at the speed at which they're moving. Yeah, I just call track high effort NASCAR because that's really all that is. It's oh, just a bunch, of, a bunch of people running around making left turns. But I, I love, get it. I, I love watch. It. I love watching the race and like there because there's never at that level. There's literally like and it's just one on one, and that's why I love like the one on one sports because you can't rely on anybody else. Like even in the relay, right? It's still one on one, like in that moment, and like if you. If you do not give it everything, because you're talking about 0. 0.00 seconds, the margin between, you know, 0. 0.002 is the margin between first and third. You can't let up. I mean, you got to be willing to just explode out there. And so I love, I love summer Olympics more than winter. Um, I know what's going on. I haven't watched a, a bit of it at all. Um, the opening ceremony was taking place early when I was in Dallas. I woke up one morning and it was on. I watched a little bit of that. That always weirds me out too. Yeah, like I the, don't the outfit choices, the outfits, and then like the whole like the gist behind it of it being like all these countries to come together in this mass like marching ceremony. I don't yeah. know if I vibe with it. It's weird. I mean, it's weird. And the different, and then when they start to like um, carry over like the different customs of like the host country into the opening ceremonies, that's always cool, but it's always weird for every country except for the country that's hosting it. You know what I mean? Because nobody else understands what the hell is going on. We don't understand the culture. We don't understand the outfits. We don't, and that's fine. Like that's the whole point of the Olympics, like bringing everybody together, you know, one common cause and we're all friends for the day. Kumbaya, all that mess. But it's a weird thing. Opening ceremonies are weird. I like it when they light the big cauldron though. It doesn't usually somebody come in with the torch like mm -hmm. at the end of it and light it up and that yeah. signifies the beginning. I don't know. It's real Hunger Games esque, but maybe the Hunger <laughs> Games is real Olymp Olympics esque. Is that, that's what it's meant to be. I mean, it could be. It could be. But yeah, I mean, fan of Olympics for sure. Team USA all the way. And I did hear that Sean White, snowboarder, famous. I mean, dude's a beast, like the top, the best who's ever done it. And he's done it forever. That he announced these are his last games. Yeah. So um, I think that would be kind of cool. I hope he does well. He's 38 years old, something like that. Yeah, it's crazy because I feel like I have this affinity for the Winter Olympics because I grew up, like, there were all these icons specifically in the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Like, when I was a kid, like, Sean White with the X Games. When the snowboarding was starting yeah. to pop off when Lin you were growing up. Lindsey Vaughn was still oh, really yeah. big with the skiing. And then, of course, you had, like, USA Hockey, too. Yep. So Let's take one minute. I don't want it to go without being said. Let's give it up. One second for the dad bods of the Olympics, the curling team. Like I saw something, it was so funny. It said <laughs> this was just like a group of dads who skipped out on their wives and their families on a Friday night to grab some beers and like, oh shit, we're in the Olympics. I mean, when you think about curling as a sport, it's literally just throwing stones on ice. It's, it's all it. it is. Dudes on there. But if you ever want to stay awake for an entire evening on YouTube. Just look up the intricacies of curling, cause like I can't imagine the guy, the people sweeping are like sweeping ice to reduce friction, cause yeah. you're not making the stone go faster. Right. It's just slowing. Cause down. it's always gonna melt, so they gotta take yeah. a little bit off. Just slowing down over the ice, so you're like controlling how it slows down, and you could like with that little broom scratch the ice and change the direction. It's insane. Someone overlaid. I can't think of the song. Um, it was a, it was it was a hip hop song, and the beat was perfect. They were like, "Who did this?" And I I wish I could remember the song, but it's the women's USA women's curling team. And I might have been like, "Shake that ass" or something like that. And they're starting like doing the broom and scratching it, 
and it's going with the beat is freaking hysterical. See, I was thinking like Gangster's Paradise. No, it wasn't like, that. As it, it gets to the circle, been it might have been. It might have been back that ass up or something like that. It was really, really funny. I'll have to find it and send it to you. So anyway, I'm definitely summer over winter Olympics, but there's good entertainment in both for sure. Speaking of entertainment, yeah. one of the world's most popular entertainment mediums has gotten into some very uh, public beef with Neil Young of all people. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I told you before we started the show that Neil Young means nothing to me as a black 24 year old. <laughs> I don't know that Neil Young means much to me as a white 43 year old. So I don't know that. So I don't know we're hurting. If Neil Young means something to you, please reach out to us. Yeah. Cause I need to know. We would, we would like to find out what demographic this is really mattering to. Yeah. I mean, I, well, here's the thing. I, it, and what you're referencing is Spotify. Yeah. And Neil Young saying, hey, if you don't cancel Rogan, basically you need to pull my music because yeah. I'm not going to share a platform with someone spreading misinformation about COVID. Right. Yeah. That's that, that, the, that's, that's where it started. That is the that's where it started. And it's devolved into so much oh, more over yes. like 48 hours. Yes. So now there's, you know, the 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 racially insensitive comments. Okay, let's call it what it is. I mean, you use the N-word in several, yeah. you know, episodes, uh, which I haven't listened to or gone back to. But here's the crazy thing about it is, like, when this doesn't work, okay, I'm calling it right now. We, so there's Neil Young. Now there's the racially insensitive comments, and th that ain't going to work in this particular situation. Most likely not. W within a week, now there's going to come out the claims of sexual misconduct and harassment. And assault, because because this is honestly how these things typically progress. And I'm not discounting any of these things, right? Because obviously I don't know shit about any of it. I'm not involved in it. I don't have intimate details that anybody else doesn't have. It's just kind of crazy to me when it's like Neil Young says, hey, yo, if you don't cancel him, we need to pull my music. I'm like, Neil, calm down. I can't name a song. And maybe that's on me, right? Maybe that's on me. I can't name a song. Whatever. Obviously, he's famous. I know the name. And he probably is, like, very, very famous. Probably a game changer in the music during a certain time that it was just before me. Yeah, I've heard but that. But Rogan name. drops, like, 15 million viewers a show. Yeah, he's the, a show. It the is most listened to. The most listened to podcast on the planet it's one of the most listened to like i guess what would technically be like news distribution platforms yeah. at a certain point oh for sure you think about i gosh i read something like a month or two ago and it was talking about cnn's top most viewed news show fox's most viewed news show um nbc msnbc all these different things and like how informative and how influential you know, these channels are and all the people they reach, the base of these different parties. Man, you add all those things up, all of them, and they didn't even get to like half of one of these dudes' podcasts. And yeah. he's dropping three, four episodes a week that go on for like three, four hours. Yeah, and he's talking to different people. Who he's talking to different people. Bring in different audiences. And I mean, my thing is, is you really got to count compartmentalize what's going on here so with the first issue you have neil young versus joe rogan and spotify right. and it's essentially i'm i'm a big believer and you never should care about anything that could potentially lose you 60 percent of your revenue <laughs> right that's exactly yeah. what that did for him is oh for 60 percent sure. of his revenue just gone yes uh losing money or it might have just been 60 percent of his streaming revenue uh -huh. regardless gone because of how he felt about misinformation. Right. Um, Cause everybody's an expert in it. And yeah. Neil Young, I'm sure is the expert into what is not misinformation regarding COVID. And that's my thing is I'm not here to argue about the science or what is or is not misinformation. But what I am here to argue is that a lot of the stuff that we are being told is 
proper information was quote unquote misinformation like six months ago. So if we just start removing people now for what we see as misinformation now, when the science changes, which is inevitably what it does, because that is what science is meant to do. Time has gone by and there's more ability to research And then it's like, oh, well, what do we do here? Because we just kind of ended this guy's entire means of making money and feeding his family. So I don't believe in deplatforming. But but. he chose that. Neil Young chose that. Like, Rogan did. Oh, no, I'm talking about Joe Rogan. The uh, the option is either, like, take down his podcast, take down how he makes his money, or you get to keep Neil Young's music. Here's the funny thing. I saw this the other day, and I about spit my drink out. It said... 15, 20 years ago, Rogan spent 10 years on network television, prime time, challenging people to drink horse sperm to win $50,000. And now the establishment is trying to cancel dude because he interviewed a doctor on his podcast. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> you know mean, what I mean? And the thing is like, that's really, really funny. It, it, that's really funny to me. I'm like all the crazy shit. And here's the thing. You don't have to, a couple things. One, you don't have to listen to any of it. Yeah. Two, just because something is said, you don't have to accept it as truth and fact. And, you know, three, the <laughs> like, yeah, that's okay. So that's, that is uh, my biggest, um, my biggest response to all of this is with the racially insensitive stuff. Yeah. Obviously as a black person. Did you go back and listen to any of it? Uh so I didn't go back and listen to I mean, I don't know there's episodes. any scenario where I listen to it and I'm like, "Oh, okay, I yeah, get it." Like I'm never going you to be like I, mean? I get it or this is okay, but my thing is is what type of judgments do you expect me to make as a black man off of like a 45 second clip of somebody just saying the n-word? Mm-hmm. I don't know how to judge that. Quite personally. Yeah, I haven't listened to the stuff, and, well, now they're removed, so I'm sure you can find them on YouTube and stuff yeah. like that. But. My, my biggest thing is I just, it sucks to hear someone I really enjoy yep. like, do stuff like that, but, again, I don't know the context, and none of it sounded hateful. Again, right. it just sounded like a 40-second clip. Did you hear of any of it? Oh, I heard the entire clip. Oh, you did? Yeah, and all of it, it it's just a 40-second clip of him saying the N-word. Granted. Like it's 40 seconds of him saying it over and over again? Yeah. Of, For what purpose? Just saying, like, hey, he said this before. Oh, so it's like they're, gotcha, they're okay. not giving any context to which this gotcha, has been yeah. pulled. I guess where these episodes have been pulled from, where you find this, it sucks to hear that because I'm I've been a fan of him since Fear Factor, yeah, watching sure. that as a kid, and I'm a big UFC fan. So I hear mm-hmm. the man speak on a weekly basis about a sport that I love. Was that forty second clip? That, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you, but I did cut you. Is that forty second clip you're talking about? The compilation of all the different episodes that it was dropped in. It's just all the moments. So it's like somebody okay. had to have combed through and listened to these episodes. Yeah. Thousands. Fr- yeah. Like what intern did that? Number one. Yeah. Um, I just think that it sucks to hear that. I don't really know what to do with them. I don't yeah. think that me as one person should be able to say like, do this f- to him, take yeah. him away. Don't take him away. But I think that it's reprehensible whenever anybody could put together a 40 second clip of you saying any slur probably not a good look well yeah for real like i think about i mean and honestly and not because of the n-word but like with me one big hesitation i had was with this damn podcast is like i say shit that's just on my mind and anybody can take anything not as definitive as what they put together with him but you can pull anything and compile it, and there's going to be things that I say that are going to piss somebody off, offend somebody, turn them off, hurt feelings, do whatever. Um, and that was one reason I didn't want to do this for a long time. And it, it is crazy to me. I didn't realize that the thing you can find on that was on YouTube or whatever that you saw was a compilation of all these moments. Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a clip that was tweeted out, like a 40-second clip. Okay, yeah, I just didn't see it. I mean, and see, that's the thing is, like, with this podcast, out of all of the things that you could say that could offend somebody, mm-hmm. I doubt that you could say them enough times for a 40-second clip. Right, no, it's agreed. absolutely wild. But the thing, too, though, is, like, yeah, where, where the change actually takes effect rather than 
you know, let's say it, it wasn't this piece that they're moving on to now. Let's say it was, you know, the misinformation and all this crap. People stop listening. That's where it impacts it. You want Spotify to do something about it. You stop using Spotify. You stop paying your service. You stop doing all of these things because Spotify is not going to get rid of Joe Rogan. When, when Rogan, pro, I mean, I won't even attempt to guess. I wish I would have thought about this before the show, but Rogan's revenue that he brings in has to be, has to be a significant chunk of Spotify's revenue. Well, when you think about it, if you want to just do like equivalent math, you could say they gave him a reported bare minimum $200 million to come exclusively to the platform. So right. what do you think that Spotify is making? Yeah. They're, they're getting a little more than double that. Yeah. And I think that there's so many other issues that kind of stem from this topic as a sure. whole because Spotify isn't paying like independent artists like myself. That's right. another topic. They pay yep. less than like a fifth of a penny. Yep. Like it's really like a point oh 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 one for one person listening yeah, to your song. Yeah, it's crazy when you were telling me that. Yeah, it's like if a million a million people were to stream my most recent song tomorrow, Yep, I would make like after six months, about $3,000. But what happens if you are bringing in a million people a day? Does that go up? Oh, I mean. The cuts go up, that, right? That's the thing is Joe Rogan, compared to me, is making like the type of percentages. Right. Because he bring, he has like a guaranteed listener right, base. Right, absolutely. There is zero chance that Spotify parts with him. They can't afford, they, they, they literally can't afford to. Yeah. But now, except when people stop using it because of him. Honestly, I don't think that that is going to affect it. It's going to take enough social pressure to force an artist to where Spotify like sees a financial loss. Like if they, well, that's what I'm saying. People stop using Spotify because Rogan's on there. That will be a financial hit to them. If they, if Rogan's on there and another large artist says, Hey, I'm pulling my music also. Okay, that impacts them. Enough artists do that. So it's got to be a combination of enough people to outweigh the benefit of Rogan. Yeah. Or if artists don't pull their work and subscribers just start bailing. I mean, that's the other part of offsetting it. Because there ain't nobody paying. If there's no subscriptions being paid for, there's no revenue coming in. See, that's the thing about these issues is, I, I don't know, I find it weird. It's like, remember that country singer that said the N-word on video? They called him, what's it, Morgan Wallen? Think, oh yeah. yeah in his driveway yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah they caught him saying that and then what happened the next day when people found out he's being canceled you saw the one rush for him to be canceled and then you saw that weird other rush of people going to buy his music and it shot him to like number one on the country charts mm -hmm. so i don't know if people leaving spotify is necessarily going to get joe rogan taken off because there no, might be it's all a give and take spotify. it's got an offset you know what it is but it, here's the thing when you hit the companies I'm not saying people should. I don't I don't know. I mean, it's you got a guy who for two years has been very vocal about things opposite of the establishment has been pushing. And for two years has been bringing in lots of people um, to talk about reasons to support those thoughts um, and share thoughts that we weren't getting from mainstream media sources. And the thing is, like, I don't care what you want to say. Rogan's show is a mainstream uh, information source. I mean, it is, it, it reaches more people than any of the mainstream media do. And so, you know, you got to take that into account. However, to, to, with any type of change, so you've heard about, and this isn't on the question, but everybody's heard about the, the trucker convoy to Canada, right? You've seen this? Uh, I just saw it on the news like last night. Okay, so it's been going on for, I think we're about like 10 days now. I mean, the thousands of truckers and farmers, I mean, it's nuts rolled up into Canada and they're blockading like the capital and the streets and like all, it's a massive inconvenience. And all these people were sending all this money to go fund me, um, to support, you know, this, this, uh, brigade of the truckers, right? The convoy. Well, uh, <laughs> freaking go fund me said, Hey, we're not, releasing the funds to the truckers. We are going to redistribute it to others in need. Well, see, when GoFundMe is, you're not just giving people to random ass people in need. GoFundMe, you're clicking on a specific need and donating to a cause, a person, 
whatever, right? So people started freaking the hell out because, I mean, it was close to like eight figures of money in this GoFundMe account. Well, so then it caught a bunch of social media traction. It's like, yo, call your credit card company, do a chargeback. And because what happens then is it screws GoFundMe with like their merchant processors and all this money. It's like, say, hey, this is fraud. The money is not going where it was intended to. You can charge this junk back. So then people started doing that. I mean, this caught a ton of fire. And it was like eight hours later, GoFundMe is like, we're releasing the funds to the intended party. I mean, they're about to shut those bad. The GoFundMe was about to disappear. I mean, it's all one big South Park episode, if you've it ever kind seen of South is. Park. Because no, they have true. an episode where it's like people get upset with uh, GoFundMe and they just go burn it down. They're like, what even is this? Yeah. Like, giving but money over the internet? That's the part. Like, when you... People want to say, like, there's nothing I can do. Like, there's always something you can do. It just... Whether you're willing to do it or not, or just assume you got no influence or power. I guarantee you right now, all these truckers up in Canada, they're exhibiting power. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea what's going on with this situation, but they're it, just tired of all the mandates and the rules and, and all this bullshit. So they're like, look, we're over it. So they're up there chilling until there's some change. I mean, <laughs> I'm a big believer in we should stop making laws to protect the dumbest and or most passionate parts of our population. Regardless <laughs> of what you believe, just stop right. making laws to right. protect people who don't want to protect themselves. If they say oh, we're, we're good, yeah, let them be good. But that's my two cents. No, that's fair. That's fair. But yeah, the the Rogan thing, um, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But I, I already think I know how it plays out. Like, the, I don't see the dude has operated for his entire career in a I don't really give a shit mentality. And he's always been very open with what he says and where he stands and all and things like that. So I don't know that any of the stuff that people are going to throw at him um, will really stick because his, his consumer, people who listen, it isn't just white dudes, you know, in their forties. I mean, his base is huge. Oh, he's got a sure. lot of people that are dialed into him and is this going to hurt him? Yeah, but I also think over the years, the dude has been transparent enough where I think there'll be an opportunity for him to to close that gap. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just there's so many parts of this issue, you know? It's yeah. like so many people who might feel passionate about it for one topic or another. Yeah. Well, I always just get pissed off when it, particularly when it comes to like racial slurs and stuff like that. Like I I have a hard time ever, because you, you made the comment I don't know the context of which it was said. And for me sitting here, not as a black person, I'm like, is there a context where it's okay? Exactly. Like, is there? Cause I, I mean, I, like I said, I'm not black. I grew up with a minority in my schools. I went to Hampton high school, you know, one of a handful of white dudes on the football team. Like it, you know, majority of my friends and, and classmates and teammates black and you know, it, it, I remember, I remember having games at certain other schools where from the stands, things were being said and being done. I remember in a, a soccer match we had damn near getting into a fight with adults in the stands because of shit that they were throwing out. Um, just my nephew, dude, a couple of weeks ago, they were at a game and I should throw it out there. I think it was, I don't, oh, I don't know the exact school, so I won't say it because I don't want to misspeak and put this on somebody else, but it was some bullshit. Like there ended up being confront confrontation between parents in the stands um, and stuff because parents were using slurs to the players on my nephew's team, like adults talking to kids playing high school basketball in the gym. That's insane. Bro, and I'm like, how did they not stop this game? How did someone not get their ass beat and their face pummeled in? Like, how? Because I think about, like, when I was in school, we would have been in the stands. We would have been in the stands. That's how it would have gone down. Like, we didn't play. And I I was just so pissed off and hurt when my wife was telling me this the other day. Um, it just It just pissed me off. And they were up rural area 
here in Virginia that's part of the district. And yeah, I, play, I played sports here. I, th- I yeah, think you I know what I'm saying. No, I mean, be, but because there's a couple schools, and I, like I said, I don't want to say the wrong one and put that on anybody. But if I was 100 percent sure, I'd put them on blast. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm only, but I'm 95 percent, and I would never do that to somebody if I wasn't absolute. Um, but it was a damn mess. Yeah, you know, it was a mess, and it was bad. Like, and I think about like how these kids feel. Like they're out there just trying to compete. Like no kid, nobody should have to be subjected to hearing that bullshit. And I don't care what type of racial slur it is. Like no one should have to be to have to hear or deal with that crap. Particularly though, a kid who's competing for their school, playing a game that 99% odds they will never play past school, right? They, they, this is, it's high school. Yeah. It's gonna be done. And they have some bullshit like that. I it just it had me hot. I'm pretty sure that team's coming to us though later this week, so I might have to go to that game. Oh, we'll, oh, we'll see. Him. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty. I got to go to that game. And that's and, my thing. Look out, because I won't. I won't stand for it. Like, and I can't believe anybody else would. And that's where I'm at with this whole Rogan thing. Is I'm like, I don't. I liked him prior to this, but at the end of the day, it's like there's not really any context in which you should be that cool with saying it. Uh, Forty. 40 second clip. So I probably won't listen to the podcast anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know how the fallout from this goes. I just know that when there's money involved, there's not going to be a whole lot of change that occurs unless there's money to be lost. Well, right. And that's it. And that's the bottom line. And that's why I referenced the GoFundMe thing with this convoy up in Canada, because there would have been no action taken until financially they had to do something. And I, I agree with you. I'm a huge Rogan fan. I don't know the context of any of it. Um, but I know just for me, from a value standpoint, I can't wrap my head around a context to where I'm like, oh, I get it. And that's the part that causes pause. And I get, you know, he dropped an apology and explained, you know, hey, this and that. But I'm like, okay, but huh? Like, you're doing that because that's the the line to walk because of what's been now thrown out yeah. and presented. But it was okay in apparently multiple situations that we were able to build up a 40-second clip, as you say. You know, So it's not just one instance. There's multiple situations where you know, it was appropriate. Now, I guess maybe, maybe, the context is him calling out somebody and in a conversation talking with someone and using the word, you know what I mean? Maybe that's the context. You know, I don't know that in that scenario, I'm like angry if he's having a conversation with, with somebody, yeah, and you that, know, and that's where and these saying things what get. said, and that's where it gets hairy though. Right. Yeah. And I don't think that number one, just don't, don't go up to your black friends and ask them how they feel about the situation because <laughs> black people should not be asked to be like monolithic uh, oh, responses, yeah, 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 yeah. responses to this. Cause a lot of people feel differently. It's like, I'm a, hu- I was a huge fan of Joe Rogan. Yep. I know people who have not heard a word that he's ever said before. And yep. this is the first thing that they're hearing about. Yeah. Um, I think it's just, it's upsetting that a lot of this gets mixed in with the whole vaccine issue and the misinformation right. issue. And now it's racism. It's all getting kind of jumbled together. Yeah. And they want you to judge Joe Rogan as a person. Right. I don't know. I, I just don't. won't listen to the podcast anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the, the thing is, it's like, I literally don't give a shit about his opinion as far as vaccination and COVID and all those things go. I receive what he says just as I would anything else. Yeah. You know, if anybody else giving their opinion on it, I don't care morally like culturally like his viewpoints as far as that stuff goes don't impact me they're simply that his viewpoints racial slurs though however morally and culturally i very easily can have a line in the concrete as a good friend of mine used last week as a reference like line in the sand moves line in the concrete is solid right this is where it's at and that's the part where it's like shit man i what what had you there? And if I really cared, which I don't care, I don't give a shit about Joe Rogan personally. Um, you know, I would, if I was super passionate about it and like a mega fan and all this stuff, 
I'd go research it and I'd find out more about it. I'd listen to full clips and, and get context, but I literally don't give a shit about him that much that I'm like, I need to research this. I got stuff going on in my daily life. I got things to do. Like I put my head down at night and the last thing that I think about before I go to bed is not what a bald man says on his podcast. (laughs) Right. Right. And, and that's how it, that's how it should be. And that's how it should be. And, you know, and if, if you want to impact those things, you stop listening, you stop paying attention. The people in power got to pay attention when it starts to hurt the wallet. And, and that's what it is wherever you fall at on the, the spectrum. So I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at. That's how I feel about snow. That's how I feel about sports. And that's where we're at on on Rogan. I think we covered the entire month of February. I We really did. It went a little different than I thought. But, hey, that's kind of how the Big Dog Podcast rolls. Guys, I will tell you, uh, in the coming weeks, we've got some real, real exciting interviews coming in. Um, You're going to get to hear and learn from some amazing people, different types of businesses and organizations, um, startups, really big, really established places. It's going to be fun. So make sure that you're tuning in, you know, every week because, you know, we're dropping a show every single Thursday. Um, it, It would mean the world to us if something was funny to you, you learned something, um, you get value out of our show more times than not, share the podcast with your friends, you know, Instagram, social media, um, leave a review, leave comments on YouTube. These are all things, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can actually, you know, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and other platforms so that you can get notified when the new episodes drop and every week, downloads increase and the listeners grow. And I I thank you for that. Um, But super, super important. We're trying to reach a lot of people. And we feel like if there's just one person each week that takes something that we're able to talk about here on the show and share, and it improves their day, their week, their year, their life, it was all worth it. Um, And so, you know, if it's a value to you, please share it, subscribe, like it. um, And, you know, we appreciate the love and we're going to keep getting in here and hoping to bring a smile to your face and, and drop some knowledge that's helpful to you. So we appreciate you. We love you. Jonathan, take us out.